A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Now we are back with another Nightmare on Elm Street review. This here for some Halloween 4. And we're at Freddy's Revenge. Now look. The original film was a classic. It is a great horror film. It's one of my favorite horror films ever made. I would be lying to you if I said that I didn't think A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 was underrated. Because it is very underrated. I really like this movie. Um, and watching it again, this movie is so much fun. It is the epitome of the 80s. It's also very gay, <laughs> and I kind of love it for that. Um, yeah, let's get into the plot of this movie. <laughs> so, this movie follows Jesse and his family, who move into the Elm Street house five years after Nancy. All that stuff happened with her. And this time, he, instead of being haunted by Freddy, is... Freddy's kind of wanting him to take over. He wants him to be, to do his killings for him so that Freddy can come out through the real world and be real, which is a little weird because you would figure Freddy would more or less prefer being in the dream world because, you know, he gets kicked out of doing the dream stuff. But the movie doesn't really go into that. The movie is a lot of fun. <laughs> like I said, this movie is really, really enjoyable. And that's mainly due to, to the performances in this movie. We have character Jesse in this. He's really good. I'm surprised I haven't seen this actor in more things. Um, even though I know this movie posted kind of did kind of kill his career for a minute there. Because, well, the gay symbolism in this movie in the 80s wasn't really the time to do that. Unless, well, actually, no, there was no unless. 80s didn't really want to touch into that kind of stuff. And this movie, well, having Jesse remain straight through the whole film... It has so many gay overtones, and I love it for that. Uh, and that's intentional, too. The directors did say that, yeah, we wanted to go for this kind of this kind of tone with this movie, and it works. <laughs> it really does work. And you do really like the character of Jesse. You do feel for him, because, of course, he doesn't want to take over and be Freddy, and he's losing his mind. He feels like he's going insane. His parents, well, his mom thinks he needs to be put in a psych world, his dad kind of just thinks he needs a good kick in the ass, as he says. Which, um, the parents in this movie are probably one of my biggest problems with this film. In the original movie, the parent of Nancy, her mom, she was very involved with the story. The parents here are just kind of there, and they just kind of interact. And the sister, who's there too, you could have done some interesting things with her. And you don't really, there's a scene where she's doing jump rope as a nightmare of vision. That, um... Jesse's having, but yeah, I mean, they're not really that involved with the movie, which is probably one of my bigger problems with it. It's not a terrible issue, it's just one of them. Um, we have the character of Grady in this movie, who starts out as a bit of, as a, bit of a rival in this movie, uh, whenever they're playing baseball, and it kind of gets to a fight with him, and then they bond over doing push-ups, and then he comes to his room later in the movie in the middle of the night, and Grady just does not care. Um, it's really... Yeah, this it's so funny talking about this because you're just like, you don't expect this from a horror movie from the 1980s to be have this many overtones in it. But it works. It really does work. Yeah, the character of Grady is enjoyable. He's only in it for a little bit of the movie and he's not really a big player in the film. But you do feel for him. You do really like him as a character. And... I love the line where <laughs> Jesse comes into his room in the middle of the night. He's like, you should be out here having sex with your girlfriend. Yeah, you're over here wanting to sleep with me. And I'm just like, hell yeah, he is. <laughs> you go for that, Grady. Um, no. <laughs> but this movie's fun. Um, we have the character Lisa in this who is your kind of... Um, she's kind of the one the character to just like, okay. She didn't have to be in this. She really only adds to things with... The journal and she helps bring Jesse back at the end of the film and she has a party where yeah it's one of the best scenes in the entire Nightmare on Elm Street series I love that scene so much I'll get into it more in a minute she's more or less just kind of there um she's the typical just talking girlfriend character because you god forbid you have a character in the 80s be gay so and especially in the horror film if a mainstream sequel to one of the most popular horror films, horror films ever with a Nightmare on Elm Street. So yeah. You would understand why. That wouldn't happen in this movie. But still. She's good at it. <laughs> she has some really good scenes in this film. 
especially when she's interacting with Freddy. He bites her leg at one point. It's really crazy. Um, but and then after this, yeah, there's this really fun, not fun, <laughs> there's this scene that every time I watch this movie, because I've always loved this movie, I've always really enjoyed this movie, it takes me off guard every single time because they're in the shower, right? And, you know, Freddy's trying to get Jesse to be part of this. He wants him to be the new Freddy Krueger. And then the coach, who is presumed to go into a lot of S&M bars, ends up being brought into the shower, hungs up, gets stripped naked, and gets his butt whipped <laughs> with a big old whip. And then he, of course, gets killed by Freddy or Jesse. They don't really explain here anymore. Or less to be like, oh, it's maybe it's a dream he's having, or maybe he was there, but... It's never really too explain, which I do like. They don't, like, over-explain this movie, at least until the very end of it. Um, but that's a scene. <laughs> it's a fun scene. Um, the film gets really good once we... Because the opening of this movie is really enjoyable, too. You know, with the bus, and it's really iconic, honestly. With Freddy Krueger taking over this bus, and... <laughs> It, it looks so silly whenever it's on top of these giant statues. Not statues, but like these big rock formations. It looks good, but it is a bit silly. Um, my favorite scene in this, my favorite part of this movie, though, is really whenever we're going into the whole, how, like, this little transition into Freddy that JC's going through, where at first the house is all kind of crazy, it's all really hot, and you're really wondering that this movie... Why in the hell would this family move into this house? The dad knew it was going to be like this, but he moved there anyway. He knew it was five years after Nancy, but he did it anyway. And he gets mad whenever Jesse brings it up later. But I like the slow transition this movie does with turning Jesse into Freddy. It is really impactful. Um, there's some really, because this movie still has the creepy scenes that the original Nightmare on Elm Street had. It really goes for that kind of unsettling quality the effects are still amazing in this movie i love the scene whenever he goes up whenever freddy tracks down jesse and he goes you got the body and i got the brain and he pulls back his head and it's a big brain and it's amazing and jesse screams he is the first male scream queen which is great <laughs> i love it so much um i think the only other one we really had was tommy jarvis yeah tommy jarvis um, and to some extent, Tommy Doyle in Halloween 6, because he was more or less the lead of that movie than, well, anyone else in the movie, but still. This is the first real first male uh, Scream Queen, and he does a doozy with it, and there's so many times where he screams in this movie, and it's, it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, the build-up's great, and with this journal that Nancy wrote, which you never really see her writing in the original, but you do believe that she would write it, so it makes sense. Uh, the movie ultimately culminates in this scene at this pool party that we have Lisa, who is doing, who's going on about with, uh, her parents are there, which you never see in horror films, you never really see parents be at these kind of parties, so it makes for an interesting idea, and it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, where Jesse eventually turns into Freddy and goes right at the pool, the, uh, water starts bubbling, this guy goes up to him, he's like, Hey, I can help you. We're trying to be nice and we're old friends and all this. And he's like, this throws him. <laughs> it's one of the best things ever. I love it so much. Robert England in this movie, even though he's not in it a lot, because this was, of course, pre Freddy 3. Um, that was really whenever they started throwing Freddy into these movies a lot more. Not right on Street 2, he was still in it, but about, I'd say he was in it less than he was in the original, which is still good. Uh, we have Robert Englund this in force, and he does, he's great. I feel like all the acting in this movie is very good. Um, I feel like this should have been the gold standard for the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies going forward. Dream Warriors I love, but I feel like post-Dream Warriors, they went way too far into the whole Freddy is an icon kind of deal. And he it just became silly. It became a very silly series. Here... This movie still had some silly moments. It's still really weird at some points. But it still keeps the idea and it still keeps the essence of A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original film from 84. To where 
yeah, I, I do really like this one a lot. And in the film, whenever Jesse gets brought back out of being Freddy, it's a really, it's a really well done scene. There's no dialogue, it's just crying, and it's really nice. And then the movie ends on the bus again, where we don't really know if Freddy is taking over. We don't know if this is a dream or not. I would love to see. I don't think they're ever going to bring back Jesse into these movies. But I would love to see a character similar to him being brought in this. Because in 2023, you can totally do this story and do it exactly like this movie was trying to, like, communicate. Because the whole story is literally, Freddy is trying to get inside of Jesse. <laughs> and they they said it so many times in this movie, somebody's trying to get inside of me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have control of my body. I'm all his. And it's really fun. <laughs> it's really great. Um, but yeah. I don't, the only real problem I have with this movie is the family, and that's because they're not really in it a lot. But besides that, I found this to be a very, very, very underrated Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I find this movie to be really overlooked. A lot of people just don't, I guess they just see the whole gay overtone, and it's like, eh, who cares? But honestly, I will give a Nightmare on Elm Street to Freddy's Revenge a B+. Plus. <laughs>